So I was at one of these uh, provincial master gardener groups. So we had like 100 master gardeners in the room. And I asked the question, how many of you have actually tested your soil? It was like two hands go up. <laughs> so we tell everyone to test their soil, but we don't do it ourselves. In your sort of first chapter about, uh, you know, identifying soil problems, um, you sort of go against you go against the grain in your book, and you, you don't recommend soil tests. I mean, I don't think you're against them, but um, you, you sort of have a qualified statement about soil tests, um, which is a, a typical thing uh, any sort of garden guru will say is get your soil tested. Get, get your soil tested. So uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Where, where were you coming from when you were when you were saying that? Yeah, you're right. I mean, most people will tell you to get your soil tested, and I'm a master gardener, and that's what we tell everybody get your soil tested. So I was at one of these uh, provincial master gardener groups. So we had like 100 master gardeners in the room. And I asked the question, how many have you, how many of you have actually tested your soil? And it was like two hands go up. Okay. <laughs> so we tell everyone to test their soil, but we don't do it ourselves. Right? Yeah. So here's the way I approach this. I, I think there's two key questions that we have to ask. Uh, the first one is, what are you going to do with the information? Okay, so now you get this report and it says, you know, you're high in potassium and you're low in phosphate and so on. And you have to go out and you have to find the right kind of fertilizer to give you the nutrients you need. Well, I can almost guarantee you, you can't find that. So you actually have to go out and buy several different kinds of fertilizers and start mixing them together and then putting the right amounts into your soil. Okay. Now, I know most gardeners, they don't do that. They get to the garden center, they'll put their piece of paper and they'll say, I need, I need this here. And the guy says, well, I don't sell that. But here's this bag of 10, 10, 10. And you say, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> right? So the first question to ask yourself is, are you really going to follow the advice on the test results? If you're simply going to go to the garden center and buy a bag of fertilizer and bring it home and use it, then don't spend the money on the test. Right? <laughs> The other thing is if you're going to go and buy some manure and some compost, that doesn't do it either. That's not going to match your test. So those are good things to do. I'm not against doing those things, but then skip the test because you're not really following it, right? And I don't meet a lot of gardeners who could actually figure out which fertilizers to buy to meet that test. So that, that's the first problem I have. Uh, the second problem I have is that the one nutrient that we know is most likely deficient in our garden is nitrogen. Okay, if anything's deficient, it's nitrogen. In fact, gardeners can pretty much assume that nitrogen is too low. Soil tests don't measure nitrogen. <laughs> okay, so the thing you need to know most, you will not be told by a soil test. I didn't okay. know that. So, so why don't they do that? Just because it's so well, it's it's so mobile, it's so transitive, sort of thing. Yeah, nitrogen changes really quickly, right? So yeah. on Monday, I go out and get my soil and I take it down to the lab. Tuesday, it rains. Well, a week from now, I get my results. It's completely different, right? Nitrogen changes on a daily, hourly basis. So agriculture does test for nitrogen, but they go and they take their sample and they freeze it and they keep it frozen, take the lab frozen, and then it goes through a special process, which costs a lot more money. Gardeners don't do that. <laughs> so for the average test, you will not get your nitrogen value, which means you don't know how much nitrogen to put on your soil, but you do know that's the one that your garden probably needs. So now what do you do when you go to the garden center to buy fertilizer? How much nitrogen do you buy? How, how much do you put on your garden? You have no idea. Well, if that's the most important part, I mean, the soil test is kind of missing the boat, right? And there's probably a, a third reason, and that is that if, if you put manure and compost and so on into your garden and, and you keep adding organic matter into the garden, you're probably not deficient in these other things. So what I recommend gardeners do is it's plant stuff, grow stuff. If it grows reasonably well, you can be pretty sure you're not deficient in a nutrient, at least no major deficiency, right? If you grow things and they don't grow well, well, then maybe get a soil test done because now you have a problem that you have to figure out. And by the way, another myth that uh, I see all the time on the internet is 
well, look at your leaves. And if, if they're this color or, or if they're, you know, have some a yellow on them, that's this deficiency and so on. And there's little charts. Okay, that doesn't work. You cannot tell your deficiency by looking at your leaves. That's complete meth. They're very nice memes and they make everybody feel good, um, but they don't work. So one thing I have in my book uh, is uh, in, um, intravenal chlorosis, which is uh, yellow between the veins, but the veins are still green. Okay, that's very common on, on plants. Everybody says, oh, that, that's an iron deficiency. And it could be, but in the book, I list something like a dozen other things it could also be. I remember that and, table. And the gardener cannot tell which one of those it is. So if it's not growing right, get a soil test. But if you plant a bunch of stuff and they're growing okay, why bother? <laughs> yeah. now, I've been gardening for, I don't know, 40 years. Um, no, maybe not quite that much, but almost 40 years. Um, I've never got a soil test done until about five years ago. And I did it mostly to make a video because I want to see what the results were. <laughs> right. So yeah. all this time, I never used the soil test. My parents never used the soil test. We just grow stuff. Yeah, yeah. There was another so, thing you said too in the chapter about you know sometimes the test is is relative to what you're trying to grow. Um, yeah, I actually I I think not very often. Not very often. So we do have a pH of soil, and uh, we have plants that need acidic soil, and then we have a bunch of plants that uh, can take pretty much anything up to alkaline soil, and. Um, if people in your area don't grow, you know, azaleas, rhododendrons, and blueberries, then your soil is not acidic, okay? And I know in the Gulf area, nobody can grow those plants. So that tells me right away, we're not acidic here. Because yeah. those plants definitely need that. And if you find yourself, uh, you know, an old time gardener who's been around the block a few times, just ask him, can you grow rhododendrons? And if he looks at you and says, well, of course not, they don't grow here. Yeah, you know you're not acidic right okay. so that's close enough right you don't need to be any closer so now the other thing that's promoted a lot is these home uh, test kits that you get from nurseries yes and i made a couple of videos comparing them to the lab tests and that, that's why i got my soil tested and quite honestly the accuracy is is pretty bad on those really? and they're cheap they're very inexpensive um, but the results aren't very reliable. Okay. So I, I don't recommend those kits. If you do care and want to know the results, get a proper lab to do the analysis. That's right. You know, it's going to cost you in Canada, it's going to cost you $30, $40 in the U S probably 15. Um, but if you need the results then get, get a proper lab test done. Mm -hmm.